so our paper our talk is uh, about the viability of production and implementation of retrospective photogrammetry in archaeology. And uh, let's see if I can find it. So uh, a number of years ago, I uh, went on a tour of a particular site in uh, ancient Corinth, Greece, and uh, it hadn't been visited in decades and had deteriorated so badly that it was almost unrecognizable, uh, called the Fountain of the Lamps. And that's it on your right, as it is now, with a swamp and wasps and snakes and things. And on the left is the way it looked when it was first excavated in uh, between 1968 and 1972 by uh, James Wiseman. And in talking to Professor Wiseman, I found that he had amassed a large archive of uh, photos while doing the excavations. And I was already doing photogrammetry in Corinth and asked him if I could have access to his archive because I thought perhaps we could produce some three-dimensional models using the older photos. And you can see here just what it was. It was a massive uh, athletic complex with uh, baths and a, and a swimming pool and called the Fountain of the Lamps because when they excavated it, they found uh, over 3,000 uh, perfect oil lamps that had been used ceremonially, ceremonially in it later on. So I started running the uh, photos through uh, PhotoScan and uh, on the and that was just a quick modern model. On the left, uh, that's not a photograph, that's a, uh, the first model that I produced using uh, uh, archival photos. And I rotated it and looked at my screen and realized I was looking at a photograph in 1972 that had never been taken and got quite jazzed up about that. So since then, I've been uh, trying to find other archival photos that match the needs of uh, photogrammetry. And one of the biggest problems, of course, is overlap. But the thing is that a lot of these sites uh, really can't be looked at properly now because they have deteriorated, because there hasn't been the funding to be able to maintain them or restore them. And in this way, we can uh, actually re revisit them uh, <coughs> both to be able to examine them and to be able to look at restoration and preservation. And in Greece, the big enemy is uh, vegetation. Uh, more than anything, fig trees and everything. It just tears walls apart. So the, the, what we're talking about here is why we need to do it. And, and the thing is that um, if, if we have research th researchers that want to uh, examine a site, sometimes the site is backfilled or destroyed or just inaccessible, in some cases dangerous, uh, they can get into a site and be able to look at it uh, from this perspective. Um, and with uh, good photogrammetry of the, um, the inappropriate photos being used, uh, if we georeference and use site plans, we can actually make them measurable to a, a certain degree of accuracy. So, this is an example in uh, ancient Corinth, and on the left is a photo as it is today, uh, all backfilled. Uh, you can't, you walk onto it and do a tour and you get told, well, this, this was a running track and this is where they ran horses, but it's just flat earth. And on the right, this is um, an aerial view of the site when it was uh, being dug in the late 70s. And uh, off to the right-hand side, you can, there are the holes where the runners would put their feet in to start and a lot of other features that are unavailable now. So uh, for a number of years, uh, uh, geologists, geographers have been taking aerial photos, older aerial photos, and modeling them. This looks aerial, but in fact, uh, it used terrestrial photos as well. So you can get down into it. Uh, you can be at eye level and see things. 
and and ultimately what I'd like to be able to do is have immersive uh, uh, virtual reality environments in which you can walk a site as it was 20 years ago, 50 years ago, and I'm experimenting with that right now. So these are a couple of examples from uh, Omega House in the Athenian Agora. Uh, this particular area is uh, off limits to the public because of both danger to them and to the site itself. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, crumbling walls and it's badly in need of preservation. Um, these are both models done from um, uh, archival photographs and in some cases, for example, the model on the left, um, what I will do is if, it's, if there's a stable, consistent uh, area that hasn't been photographed properly initially, I can photograph it uh, in the present, process it to seem like the older photos, and get a more contiguous model, and then when doing uh, texturing, remove the modern photographs, and we have a model that looks as it was back in the day. Uh, and this is an aerial view of that uh, particular uh, structure. It was the last, uh, or thought to be the last uh, school of philosophy in the ancient world. Um, now this example, what I'm showing is, uh, this is all, uh, looks as though it's backfilled in all the proper places. But a lot of the photographs when you're uh, going through the archives are taken during excavation. So either it hasn't gone down as far as the final level or it's gone down below the final level and is backfilled later on when a feature is decided that it isn't going to be included. So the photo on the left shows a lot of um, uh, other trenches and dig areas uh, during excavation, so one would think that that would be a photo that you throw aside and just try and use a set that are more uh, consistent. But in fact, using photos like that that have um, features that you don't want, or workers, or boxes, or whatever, you can mask out those areas and still use that photo to try and establish a stronger geometry in your model. And so that's what I've been doing with these. Um, the uh, most most features, you know, workmen walking with shovels, he, he's in one photo, so you block him out and the photo's still good. Um, in one case, I did have a wall at which a woman sat and sorted uh, artifacts for the entire dig, and so when the modeling happened, she had to be part of the model, <laughs> unfortunately. But she's immortalized. So this summer, uh, as part of a project where we're working on doing the retrospective photogrammetry, we also wanted to do a current, uh, a, a current modeling of the uh, Omega House. So uh, with a team from uh, Studio 727 in uh, Bratislava, uh, we took 42,000 photographs, uh, modeled the entire site, and then uh, made a uh, uh, virtual environment uh, in which you can walk around within the site, step down stairs, you can fall in wells, and uh, that's being used now uh, for demonstration purposes in Athens and is going to be set up as a uh, virtual room at the Athenian Agora uh, later this summer. Uh, the next goal is to be able to take the retrospective modeling and have that as part of the immersive environment so that you can switch between 1972, 2017, or we're also doing a uh, reconstruction of what it was like in 400 AD so that you'll be able to move into that time zone as well. So there two things that happen with uh, retrospective photogrammetry. One is the, the needs of the person doing the modeling, and, uh, and they're pretty specific. The other set is what the end user is going to want. So 
in retrospective photograph, uh, photogrammetry, um, we need a relatively similar time frame. We can't have trees building up or, or features that have collapsed. Um, less camera variety is, is really good. And in many cases, you can have a half a dozen different cameras that were used, and we don't have any kind of correction for those. Um, if there's enough overlap in the site, and some sites, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, the Athenian Niagara, John Camp did a fantastic job of getting a lot of photographs with a lot of overlap, really comprehensive. In some cases, I've seen archival sets where features were uh, focused on so much that the whole set didn't get made, and there's nothing you can put together. So there is a little bit of, um, uh, you can't go back with it. You can hopefully work with what you have. Aerial photographs are a fantastic thing to have with this. They will pull a model together so well and if you're georeferencing them and georeferencing your uh, archival terrestrial photos, the model will just pull together really nicely. Uh, in some cases, if you don't have aerial photographs, if you have a uh, site plan, you can convince the software that it is a photograph and use it as your aerial. And then when you're doing your texturing, you can remove it. Uh, the scans, um, if you have high quality scans, a set that I'm working with right now has been done on several different scanners at all of the different resolutions and, uh, and that really reduces the quality of your result. And producing the least steps in the process can reduce your errors. So this is the fountain of the lamps, and this is uh, after modeling bit, uh, and after texturing. Just what you can do is, for your final model, remove the, the site plan, but you can check the accuracy of your uh, model by keeping the site plan in initially when you do your texture and see how much it ma uh, matches up with what kind of uh, um, three-dimensional features you've got showing. And then there's error reduction. Um, so you've got the original lens distortion, and then you've got camera and camera and camera, and uh, each one of these lenses has its own distortion. And then you have film grain. But in fact, we're then using an enlarger and making a print, and the prints all have, the enlargers all have uh, an error to their lenses, and plus much multiple enlargers are used. And we make our prints, now we've got print grain, and this is all affecting points and features which wouldn't have mattered as much visually, but matter an awful lot to the photogrammetric software. And then we've got the scanners and their distortion multiple scanners. And finally, the greatest enemy is pixels. And uh, those pixels are going over top of your grain and your other grain and all of the other errors that you have. So I'm just going to mention what I want to move towards this summer is we're going to be going uh, going to Greece and working with a high-end scanner, just one scanner, and scanning the original uh, uh, glass slides and uh, films and removing all of these other middle uh, errors in order to get uh, more accurate modeling. So then the end user, in this case, uh, with Omega House, the end user is uh, uh, the Greek Ministry of Culture. And so you have to consult with whoever you're going to be uh, producing for because they may have very specific needs. And in this case, the Ministry of Culture needs really accurate modeling that can be used by their uh, engineers to be able to 
conduct a reconstruction and preservation of the site. We need to make sure that formats are able to be used by them. For example, if you're dealing with a ministry or a client that doesn't have ultra high-end computing uh, abilities, you can't be putting out uh, a model that goes far beyond anything they'll ever be able to show. It has to be done in formats that can be used 10 years and 20 years into the future. Um, full co coverage is very important. Um, if, if, if we can't give them a complete model, it's not going to be much use to them. And as I said, the accuracy, they're going to be needing to be able to look at that wall and go into their software and measure and find out that it was 5.4 meters and measure stones and know that that's the stone that actually belonged there. And so being able to measure the results once it's done, if they're going to be using it for research or if other people are going to be trying to do reconstructions, they need to be able to measure and figure out how that works. And what do we want? We want to save cultural heritage. A lot of these sites are deteriorating and if we don't capture them at this moment, we might not be able to again. Some of them are gone. We can go and revisit them in this uh, retrospective modeling. And uh, even if they're completely destroyed, we can still study them as though we're uh, back in time. And of course, doing conservation and restoration and preventing all of these sites from being lost. And I would just like to thank this group uh, for all of their help with the research that we've been doing. And I look forward to uh, being able to move forward this, with this and make more accurate uh, models. Thank you.